Hello, and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. If you're new to this type of work, we suggest you start with Episode 1 and move your way forward from there. Each episode builds on the last, and you'll have a solid understanding of the spiritual world by the time you get to the end. If you're further along in your journey, start at Episode 98. And if you're ready to step into being a spiritual practitioner or teacher yourself, then Episode 200 is the best place for you to start. Wherever you are in your journey, we are here to help guide you to the next level. With me, as always, to share her insights and wisdom is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Hey, Jules. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. I made it through our new intro. (laughs) (laughs) I had to do it by myself last week. (laughs) Yay. Yay. Go team. (laughs) So now just as soon as I memorize the other one, I have to memorize this one. (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah, we had too many episodes for people and, and it just made sense to give people an idea of where to start. So absolutely. I think it's great. Yeah. All right. Well, how's everything down in Panama? It's warm. It's warm. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating right now. I got I got a, two fans going, and I've got the wind blowing, and I'm still a little sweaty over here. So, you know, welcome to Panama. So it's it's still the dry season, so at least it's not super humid. Oh, that's good. Well, we yeah. actually had a little um, a miniature cool front come through because it got down like 59 degrees at night which was really nice. Yeah, I was excited. But then, you know, we're, we're, we're getting up into the, you know, 70s and 80s, and it'll be triple digits for too long. Ugh, no. Yeah. No, thank you. I live yes. in the mountains for a reason. It's always the same temperature. It's just the matter of humidity, right? So, That's it. You know. no, That's no, no. it. But we yeah, got it the- gets cooler at night in the, in the dry season, too, because we don't have the clouds to keep the heat in. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not as cloudy. So right. when does y'all's rainy season start? End of this month, end of April. Okay. Yeah, theoretically. Okay. Yeah. Last year it started early, so they got, there was over 260 inches of rain last year here. Oof. That sounds like a lot, but I don't know. If it, it is a freak ton. <laughs> it's a freak ton. We can get two to four inches an hour here. It just goes, oh my gosh, whoosh, the sky opens and it just slams down. <laughs> you literally, you can't hear anything. We have an insulated, so all the ribs are metal. Um, okay. but, and we have an insulated roof, which you desperately need if you're going to live in Panama. Um, it, but even with the insulation and the ceiling, you still can't hear anything when the rain is coming down like that. Cause it's just like, yeah, it's intense. We're the, we're the same way, different scenario, because Mitch and I live full-time in, in an RV, you know, that you pull behind oh, right. your truck, right? Yeah. So, so, so when it starts raining, we're like, okay, turn the TV up to as loud as it can go. It's like, never mind, just find something else to do. Yep. So, Although I will say that. so good. Oh, right? Yes. We we bought a, um, a projector TV. Um, because oh, I just we didn't buy a TV when we first got here. We've just if we wanted to watch something, we watched on the computer, right? But um, we just bought a projector TV, and we had friends over last weekend, and we watched t- we watched a movie outside in our backyard with a projector TV. It was awesome. It was like being at a drive-through without being in the uncomfortable car, right? Yes. <laughs> Or having to yes. sit on the car hood, you know, I haven't hood, been yes. to a drive-in since I was like 17. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was really good. It was really fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, today we are talking about sigils. We are. So here's the deal, right? Um, sigils are, as it says in the title, the written language of spells. Now, Yes and no, right? Because you could write a spell, right? People do it all the time. You know, I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Thank you, Disney, Disney, right? Yes. That that's a written spell right there. You know, although we all heard it or you know, verbally. But sigils are a they're a compressed language of spells is probably the best way to say it, because basically what you're doing is you're turning a spell into a single 
element that uh, you can activate, right? So it's a single image that you can activate. So a sigil really should not be bigger than, than your face if you're writing it down, okay? Okay. <laughs> so if you're on YouTube right now, you're watching us, you know, shape our faces, right? But your sigil should not be bigger than the size of your face if you're writing it down for the average thing. If you're going to use a sigil as a protection on a building or something, then, you know, you want to make it huge, right? Because you're protecting a building. But, you know, for most cases, uh, I, I don't use sigils for a lot because I find it faster to just, you know, do the spell, right? But a lot of people really love them, and I do use them for my car, I use them and for I my truck. It, yeah, I do it because I can wax the sigil into the hood and then buff it down, right? And so it's in the the wax, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I use it for protection for the car. But much like any other type of spell, you have to be careful how you construct your sigils, right? And so, Let's not blow ourselves up. Well, and let's worry about the, un let's, let's actually worry about the unintended consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, for instance, if you're, if you're trying to do some protection on your car, so you don't get tickets and you say, you know, I'm invisible to cops, then you might have a cop on a chase run into you because you're invisible. Okay. If you say, you know, cops don't see me, um, then, you know, or you could say, if you mistakenly say, ah, uh, nobody, you know, you, you don't see me. If you just put a don't see me on there, then people may be running you off the road because they don't see you. Okay. I bought a car in 1996 that I swear to God was used as a surveillance vehicle because no one saw that freaking car. I mean, it was a Chrysler LeBaron. It was a big ass blue car. There was no reason to not see this big ass damn car. And no one saw it because the surveillance guys spent the entire time going, don't notice me while they were sitting in the car. And they had put a big old don't notice me energetically in I the car. I was going to say and time, energetically. And at the time, I didn't know how to fix it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And so okay, I got wax hit on, multiple wax times off. in that car. People ran red lights to hit that car. I don't under, I, well, I hated the car. That's why they ran red lights to hit it. But I, I really, <laughs> I bought the car because my ex-husband wouldn't let me buy anything else. And I was not in my power yet. So to tell him to go, go fly. But um, yeah, so there, there was, there was a lot going on. <laughs> but, but I swear that it that was used as a surveillance vehicle because of that. Right. So, you know, you have to be careful with these things, right? So, you know, let's talk about sigils. So, so, so there's basic construction, right? And the construction, when you look at most things online, they're going to tell you that you, you basically you write out your spell and then you take out all the spaces and then you take out all the repeating letters and then you take out all the vowels and then you're left with a few letters, which you then arrange into a structure, right? Now, by structure, you mean a, a, a drawing, a symbol, a drawing, a, yes. an artistic, you, you artistically put the letters together so where they look, my words, witchy, they look woo-woo-y. Woo-woo-y? We're going to go the with that. The goal is not to make them look woo-woo-y, okay? Okay, don't make the them look woo-woo-y. <laughs> That's a new word. It, it, it may end up looking woo-woo-y, but you know, it's not the goal, right? The goal is to take the intent of the spell and smush it down into a single symbol. Okay. Now, here's the challenge, right? And here's the reason why I don't really like sigils very much. Um, and that's because it is very easy to get up in your head and all stuck in the how and, you know, manipulating the things and the what's it's and the who's it's and making everything work together and blah, 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 blah. Right. And now you're all up in your head. You're not in your energy. You're not in your intention. You're in your creative self trying to make it look pretty and woo woo. Right. But you're not in your intention and the intention is what creates the magic, right? And so 
it, it requires a lot of discipline to actually do a sigil and do it well because you have to stay in your intention as you're doing all of the elements to get you there. Okay, and it's so much easier to just go, bang, this is what I want, right? And, and so, you know, it, it just, in my mind, sigils are overly complicated, but people ask me about them all the time. And in fact, this episode was suggested by a mm -hmm. listener. Can you, yeah. but, but let's Tasha give her a shout out. Yes. Thank you so much, Tasha Lani, L-O-N-I, Wolf. Mm -hmm. She requested yeah. this. And she was also asking about, um, the, about the runes. Yeah. Well, and, and that's important because... I, if, if I do a sigil, I do it out of runes. And so I'm not using English. I'm using Norse runes. And these what is are, a rune? so a rune is, it, it's another divination tool. So okay. it's the equivalent of like tarot cards, right? Oh, okay. Um, but they, they have individual symbols that mean different things. So like they, they have tier, which is, you know, success or, um, you know, victory, right? They have, they have a lightning bolt that, that looks like an S that is success. They have hoggle, which is, you know, a, a two, it looks like a H with a, a, a diagonal cross point in the, in between the two uprights. Uh, which means disaster. It's, it's kind of the equivalent of the, the tower card in, in tarot. Um, okay. But there's all these different things. And, and R, there's an R that looks like, uh, that, that's for journey, right? For, and so okay. when I do a sigil, which is very rarely, I only do it when I buy a new car, <laughs> new to me, um, is I'm using runes to do it because the runes are, already a magical element to me because they're a divination tool and I am taking the energy of those elements and I'm putting them together and there's usually because you're you're doing you know protection and you're doing travel safe travel and you're doing you know whatever you're usually only using like three or four elements three or four runes that you're binding together right and so there's um and in in runes they call that a bind rune so it's a sigil, but it's also a bind rune. It's the same thing, right? Okay. And the thing that's important is you don't want to have any open spaces because the, the theory is that the energy falls out through the open spaces. So if you had an R, the bottom of the R is an open space, right? All right. So, so if you don't have anything at the bottom of like the so. R, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to, we to describe it verbally because we've got people listening on, on just the po straight podcast and well, audio, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, if you're on, if you're on video, um, so if you have an R, the opening at the bottom of the R is a way for energy to sort of roll out. So you could just reverse the R and add a second R underneath it. Like it's mirrored at the bottom. So to close off the top there, or you may use another piece of the rune. That's yeah. what I did. Uh, yeah, that's not exactly it, but no, that's, that's not a reversal. That's not it. Dang it. <laughs> that's not a reversal. So, but you may have another um, element that is to be included that could close off that bottom piece, right? Or you could choose to put a circle around it and have both pieces of the R at the bottom of the R touch the circle and that closes that bottom as well, right? Ah, okay. Right? So the idea being that everything should be enclosed within in a single image that doesn't have any wild openings and whatever you're you're trying to create symmetry whenever you can you're trying to uh, to bring it into harmony unless unless the bind rune or the sigil that you're trying to do is trying to create discord and disharmony in which case you would not try to make it balanced and harmonious and whatever you would try to make it chaotic and you know whatever so, you know, you want your bind rune to energetically reflect and physically reflect and your sigil to physically reflect the energy of the spell that you're creating with it. Right. So, you know, it's, you can do this and, and, you know, you should absolutely try it, right? Absolutely try it. There's absolutely no reason not to try it. I don't personally prefer it. But some people love these things. Some people love the act mm -hmm. of creating them. They're super artistic. They, they love the, 
the mental act of finding the right way that all the elements fit in together and and whatever and and if that's your game then great do it this will be a good fit for you it's not mine okay and i'm not saying they suck i'm just saying it's not my thing right, right. I, it's not the way my brain likes to work okay um can i make it work yeah but do i have fun with it not really right it, you should do it if you have fun with it, if you enjoy it, if it, if it makes sense to you. And if you can hold the intention while you create the rune or the sigil, right? The bind rune. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is that you absolutely have to hold the intention or else it's completely fucking useless, right? So that's the thing, right? So you want to make sure that, that you're holding the intention as you're creating it because that's the whole freaking point, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, and here, another element, if you want to use letters, right? If you want to use the English language and you want to use the, you want to create the sigil, uh, not using runes, but using letters, mm -hmm. um, then what I'm going to say is do not write a freaking long thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The problem I see with uh, people who are new to magic is that they try to make something that's complicated. And they're like, oh, and this, and that, and that, and that, and that. No, you can't do that. There's too many variables. And every time you add a variable, you add unintended consequences to the mix. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, or, or potential unintended, I'm going to say unintended consequences rather than potential because I guarantee you're going to have unintended consequences if you put too many elements into it. I, I, I think so strongly like a magician that I also think like a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> and so I look for what's the worst thing that could freaking happen. And, and I would miss things if there were too many elements in it. Okay. I would have unintended consequences and I am the queen of looking for what could possibly go wrong. So, yes. um, so keep it simple. So, okay? so like, so like on my truck, I, 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 and I was looking for my sigil in preparation for this. And I couldn't find it. It's somewhere. Yeah. It's in my, it's in my, my grimoire somewhere. Yeah. But, um, like on my truck, it was, I remember you, you were helping me with it when I was doing it to put it on my truck and it was, um, Something, something like my um, my travels will be either easy or enjoyable, and I don't remember which it was. But it was like see Jane run. I mean, it was very basic sentence. Yes. It wasn't. I want to get to work early. I don't. I don't want any traffic. I want to. You know, right. it wasn't all of that. It was literally no. a third grade sentence. <laughs> yes, and that and was it to keep it to concise. Be that. Yeah, it needs to be super concise. Because anything beyond that and life gets ugly. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what you have to learn how to do is how to boil it down to its elements or how to, how to, how to boil it down to simplicity. It's like, okay, what gets me this without me having to list 14 different things. Yeah. Right. And sometimes it's just, that makes me happy. Right. And, and that can be sufficient. Right. It's like, I want to, it, you know, instead of saying, I, if you're going to make a sigil for, you know, the, your soulmate to come into your life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, I highly caution you about using the word soulmate. <laughs> I remember that. Twin flames are soulmates too. And that could be a problem. And okay? that's not a good thing. <laughs> mm -mm. They're, they're challenging. So, uh, you know, you could say, I would like to bring a gender of your choice or non-gender of your choice into my life okay and it's not i would like to it's you know this person this gender of choice non-gender of choice uh uh is is in my life it's not will because that's future you have to claim it now claim it now in the present you know, i am in relationship with this person mm -hmm. who makes me happy <laughs> right yeah that's it if you start putting in, they have to be X amount tall. They have to make X amount of money. Yes. They have to have the same belief structure as me. They have to, you know, you start listing all this shit out. Will you get it? Yeah. 
you'll get it because you manifest, right? You know, but you may not like the way it shows up. I mean, we had this conversation at one point on the podcast, I'm sure, where I manifested the guy who was the conservative Republican Catholic who wanted, who with political aspirations, who wanted to get married and have kids. And I wanted none of that, right? <laughs> but he was everything I asked for. <laughs> he asked for the exact opposite. <laughs> Opposites no, don't I always attract. I asked for somebody who I got along with and who my friends would enjoy and, and who we had shared interests and, and, and where, you know, he was honest and trustworthy and, you know, and, and, and forthright and, you know, who was great in bed and, you know, all of these, I mean, a whole, whole long list the of whole shit. Thing. Yes. A whole long list. And I've forgotten. And I said on my same spiritual path or a parallel one, Forgetting that parallel does not cross. Never me. And I didn't say anything about <laughs> common values and common goals, <laughs> which is what's good you can, you, Yeah, which but. you can have shared interest. You can both both love. I'm gonna make it up. Fishing. Yes. But yeah. you're you're more liberal, libertarian, yeah. and he's strict conservative. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Just libertarian, don't talk. but yes. Okay, L liberal, right? <laughs> liberal. <laughs> Although I do have a lot in common with the libertarians. I've spent some time with them recently, and I do have a lot in common with them. I told but, you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know, but I'm not entirely libertarian. I okay. know. No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a no-go, right? Loved him. Loved him. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. And fish and bird, where will we make a home? Is no place, <laughs> right? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to poop blub, on your head. Blub, blub. Yeah. I will eat the poop. Blub, blub, yeah. blub, blub. Blub, blub, blub. Ew. <laughs> That's what fish do. Okay. Do <laughs> that. All right. Start going back around. So our sigils, once, once we put the sigil in place, mm -hmm. is it there forever? It's there. Well, or... it's there until something changes it, right? So if you stripped all the wax off your car and you put the sigil on with wax initially, then mm -hmm. when you strip all the wax off, the sigil's going to go away, right? Because that's the, the, the vehicle through which you put the thing on the car, right? If, mm -hmm. a, if a sigil is on a building and that part of the building gets destroyed, you know, somebody mm -hmm. drives through the side of the building or somebody puts a window in there or whatever, then that sigil will be gone, right? Even if it's painted underneath, if it goes through it, the part of the sigil ceases to exist. It's kind of like on Supernatural, right? You know how on Supernatural, they've always got these protective circles on the ground. And, and mm -hmm. you know, if, if something breaks the circle, then the circle is the no longer protected. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, but sometimes it's actually etched on the ground. And if, yeah. if the ground shakes and the earthquake happens and it splits yep, the circle, splits, the circle is broken, screwed. it no longer functions. Sigils yeah. work in the same fashion. Can I take them off if I want? to sure yeah just whenever okay yeah whenever you can just pull the energy out of the sigil you don't have to okay. actually strip the wax off the car or whatever you can just pull the energy out of the sigil to remove it okay yeah because what when you're you the one who put it in if you're the one who put it in if somebody else put it in then then you you that that could be a little trickier well because i was wondering about like the the, the car you were describing let's say i buy a second hand car and i have no idea what's going on with it yeah. Well, you can overwrite. Most people who do things on cars do it either on the hood or on the doors. And so if you just do a, a cleansing over the top, okay. you know, create a new layer of protection cleansing over the top yeah. and then put your sigil on top of it, you'll probably be fine. The, this car, I'm certain, okay. was not protected in that way. It was just used in a way where people Just were like, inner... don't, look, don't look, don't look, don't look, yeah. don't look. Right. Yeah. You know, today I would be able to clear that very quickly and easily, but back in the day, I didn't have those skills. So. Very good. Yeah. Um, are there any, Ooh, real, uh, in, any other really, Ooh, don't do those on sigils. Any, here's how not to blow yourself up kids. Hmm. So the same, so we have an episode on spell, uh, you're writing your own spells. It's, it, it's recent, right? The same rules that apply to writing your own spells apply to sigils. And so okay. if you are thinking about doing a sigil, I would seriously recommend 
that uh, you go back and listen to the episode on casting uh, on you know creating your own spells, which I think was I don't know it's not that long ago. It's like twenty thirty episodes ago. So, um, and I was uh, trying to find it, and of course I can't. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. And that's you know three hundred episodes, guys. We just there's there's only so many we can do, right? Um, ooh, smoke. I have wood smoke going on outside. It's wonderful. <laughs> ADD moment. Don't mind me. Squirrel. Um, yeah. Squirrel. So the, uh, you know, the, the same caveats apply in terms of setting your expectations, in terms oh. of being aware of the unintended consequences and all of that. Yep. Number 282. 282. See, I was 282. right. 282. I said 20 episodes ago. That's it. And it's almost exactly 20 episodes ago. Look at me, I rock. Right? Okay. It came out December 4th-ish, 22, if my dates are correct. There you go. Okay. It should be. That's that's our spreadsheet. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know, I would highly recommend going back and listening to that because the same rules apply. It's, it's, it's a spell. Just like any other spell, it has to follow the rules just like any other spell. Um, I... I Okay, so I just I just have to say something. This is not related to this, right? Oh, but I have to say it. I was on TikTok today, and there was a video of somebody being exercised. That they were having an exorcism to get a Harry Potter character out of them. That was just absurd. I'm like, one, I know Harry Potter canon very well. I didn't see a single character other than Voldemort that ever possessed anybody in the entire canon of Harry Potter, including the Fantastic Beasts series. There's no precedent for possession in that fashion. And I'm like, what the actual fuck do you think you're doing? And she's like, oh, well, my evil laugh is my character coming out. I'm like, no, bitch, that's just you liking to have an evil laugh. And you're just thinking that you have to exercise your own creativity out of you. And that's very sad. But, yeah, I'm just saying. That's fucked up. I don't there's care who some you are. Shit I'm just saying. I'm just Y'all are I'm making like, this really? shit up. <laughs> they, are, they are entirely making this shit up. It's like, you know, it, it, it would be the equivalent of saying I'm possessed by Spock. You know, it's the, it's the equivalent. I swear to God. Or, you know, Frodo. Wait, wait. It was Frodo has possessed that... me. Yes. Spock. Live long and is, prosper. Is that that one? Right? Yeah. Which one was it? Nanu, Nanu. With uh, Mork, Mork and Mindy. Nanu, That's Nanu. Mork. Mork. <laughs> Mork. Right? Robin Williams. Love him. Which is this, but this way, right? But the, okay. This is, Yeah. It's hysterical. Anyway, I when I get saying, tickled, y'all, I snort. That's just all shit. there is to it. <laughs> when I get tickled, I snort. Oh my god! So, be careful what oh, you wait, listen what to you... on the internet. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> because there's some serious crap out there. There's some serious crap. Well, out there. it was on TikTok. <laughs> I'm just. I'm so just wait, like, wait, oh wait, my wait. God. I'm going back to what bed. What was the <laughs> outcome? I have to know. What was the outcome? Oh, oh she was. She she was healed through the power of Christ. She was healed <laughs> through the power of Christ. Yes. Can I get an amen? She stopped giggling. She was healed. I'm just... <laughs> now, let me be clear. I believe that Christ has power. Let me be clear. Oh, no, he But did. Christ is sitting on the other side looking at these batshit people and going, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> He's like, Christ was a magician, okay? Christ. Hold my, Chris is going, hold my beer. Let me show you how this is done. <laughs> First off, you don't have any Harry Potter in you. I'm just saying. Right. Maybe you wish there you are did. No, yeah, I mean, so Harry Potter, the canon of Harry Potter has an yeah. egregore to it. And so we've talked about egregores in previous episodes, so you can look those up too. But it has an egregore. It has a spirit of itself that has been created through the uh, devotion of the Harry Potter fans and individual characters within the lexicon of, uh, you know, within the, the world of Harry Potter 
have their own egregores as well because there are people who are just in love with Dumbledore or McGonagall or, you know, whoever, Harry himself mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Um, but to say that those egregores are sentient enough to possess someone and that they would choose to possess someone for whatever freaking reason, I have no idea. Is you ain't all in a bag of chips, baby. I'm just saying. Well, it's absurd. <laughs> It, it, it is. Egregores, egregores have volition to the point where they have been given them, right? So, so the egregore of, say, for instance, McGonagall would okay. be limited by the canon of, Larry, uh, of Harry Potter, right? So whatever McGonagall would have done within the books and the movies mm -hmm. yeah. would be the limit of what the egregore of McGonagall could do. So, she, she, so literally, she uh, they, she could not act out of character. Correct, because that is what the egregore was created from was from the canon and from was the from the canon circuit. of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if a particular piece of fan fiction got super super powerful, then that that piece might be part of the egregore as well. But it would have to be really popular, because there's so much uh, of the the world that is just attached to the canon as written, right? And so, you know, th that would be the limitation on that. So I'm discussing it, not because it's realistic, but because it's an interesting mind thought game, right? It's like, okay, how does this work? You know, let's talk about this in a little bit more deep, mm -hmm. a little more depth, a little, a little deeper, um, so that you can understand the construct and how it's created, right? Because it is created through the books and through the fandom. And, so, you know, the books are canon. They are the, the, the source material for the egregore. And, and the source material combined with the devotion of the followers and the readers and the watchers is what creates the egregore. And so when you take that into account, that character is a solid energetic and so they're not going to act out of character. They're not going to take yeah. somebody over. Now, you know, Voldemort, maybe if somebody really wanted to use him, but, but not really because he had permission to possess the guy that he was in, you know, and mm -hmm. he wasn't even possessing him. He was just cohabitating with him. There is right. no possession per se there's, there's, there within was no the Harry Potter possession. canon. No, there's no, no possession anywhere within the Harry Potter canon. Um, and so now, it doesn't fit. Now, and right. in that construct that you were talking about, if we have, I'm going to make up the number, mm -hmm. 50 million fans, right, mm -hmm. going in um, to, the, to build this egregore, the energetic of this, one fan is not going to completely, would not have the energy, I would say, or the effect Correct. To, to change that, I'm going to make it up, make Harry Potter a bad dude. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. There's no way to do that because there's too many other people holding that energy. Holding that, that steady, you yes. know, going, no, I love Slytherin. There's a reason I love yeah. Slytherin. A, yeah. Right. We're not going to yeah. make them angels, you know, right. <laughs> We're not going to make yeah. them a Hufflepuff. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and quite frankly, because so many of the, the Harry Potter fans are actually magical people on top of it. So <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, right. Have fun. <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's really interesting. That's uh, interesting. And me, y'all, I thought it was gotta, an educational gotta, conversation. It yeah. was. Yeah. I would never think of this, like, that, one, that would happen. But, two, it's such an interesting conversation for me. This is right. so cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and that's what I thought, right? So I, I thought it was a useful thing to explain to people um, uh, in, in the context of the ridiculousness of the, the whole construct. <laughs> But whatever. Yeah. So okay. I, I do want to make an announcement, which is that uh, I am changing the title of our programs. And uh, I don't know if this is going to go out just before or just after the title change, because I'm not sure what the, the scope, you know, when the, the thing is happening. But April 30th, um, we're, this we're, one comes out. Yeah, this one goes out April 30th, but, you know, yeah. that doesn't help me in terms of I don't know when we're going to finish the rebrand. We're still working on it. It's coming, uh, there's people. A lot. It's coming. It's There's a lot. lot. 
but we are going to rename the programs. They are going to be the exact same programs we've been talking about all this time, but instead of uh, focusing on the personal growth side of it in the marketing, we're going to focus on the, the spiritual awakening side of it. And so the program series that used to be Inner Peace 101, Mastering Spiritual Evolution and Mastering Inner Healing will now become Welcome to the Woo, Woo Squared, and Woo You. So, uh, which also more accurately reflects my <laughs> sort of, you know, very like irreverence for everything and, um, you know, my, my sense of fun. So we are going to make that change here very soon. We're in process yes. actually on making that change right now. And so if you sign up between now and when the, the change happens, you know, it's crapshoot as to which one you're going to get in your title. <laughs> um, we do have the new ones set up in the back end of the system for, for the welcome to the woo for the first program in the series, the, the, the second and third ones are not converted yet. So, um, but I'm just letting you in behind the scenes on what's happening with the company because, you know, I, uh, I, I just I wanted it to reflect more fun and I wanted people to not be so intimidated by the work because it doesn't have to be intimidating. And if you're coming at it from the, the spiritual awakening woo side, then it, it feels lighter, right? Yeah. Um, there's no reason to be afraid of this work. You know, mm. it is mm. it is the best thing you can ever do for yourself. It will change your life. That. Yeah. <laughs> and it changes your life in ways you cannot possibly imagine now. Um, and all for the good. So, okay. you know, we're going to, we're going to approach it from that side and hopefully help people get over that hump of resistance that is, Oh, I'm scared. And then, you know, you don't have to be scared. It's okay. So, um, this is my invitation. If you would want to be one of the first people in the door using the Welcome to the Woo program series uh, title and the new energetic that's going along with that, then then this would be the time to sign up for a discovery call. We do have a link in the sound in the uh, show notes for that, and uh, you can join up for the program. We've also we've also we used to so this program used to run for eight weeks instead of sixteen. And for the last few years, we've been running it for 16 weeks because when COVID hit, everybody's brains went, huh, what? Mm -hmm. Huh, what? I got no brain. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Right. And so now that now that people are not as panicked, I mean, I know the U.S. is still a dumpster fire, but um, people's brains are coming back online now. So. As your brains are coming back online, we've taken it back down to the original eight-week series sequence, um, and we've also brought the price back down from five thousand back down to three thousand. So that price is much, much more attainable now for more people, which was the goal. Um, and if you need extra time, there is a way to pay for an extra month. If you if you are like somebody who's like, I just need more time. That's fine. We can still do that, but. Um, we, we, we have brought that price back down. So with that said, come play with us. Yeah. Woohoo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a woohoo, but <laughs> well, I'll say, well, so, so, so here's my thing in an age of inflation out the wazoo, come with us. Woohoo. The price went <laughs> down. So come over to the woo. <laughs> I'm just saying. There you go. Yeah. And I, I wanted to make it more accessible for people. So there you go. Absolutely. So, okay. All right. Well, that's, that's, I think what we've got, we didn't have any questions this, this time around, right? Mm -mm. I, I know. I yeah. don't see any of my notes. Okay. So if you guys have questions, you can always send them in. I mean, these ideas came from the, the, uh, spirit Sherpa, uh, by Kelly Sparta Facebook group. And so I periodically, when I have to come up with topics, I put in a thing into that group saying, oh, what do you need to know? Or sometimes people will ask a question in the group and I, I answer it here or I answer it online or I put a TikTok out about it or whatever. But, um, you know, by all means, please join that group so that you can be part of the conversation because I really want to get to know everybody. And we've had so many new downloads in the last month. We've literally gained 30, our downloads are up 33% in the last month. Holy and wow. we are, oh yeah, we're, we're charting in China, in Poland, in Botswana and Namibia. And oh, yeah, which yeah, means yeah. that we're in the top 250 podcasts in that country 
uh, on in the topic of either religion and spirituality or spirituality. And so, you know, we want to get to know you. So please yes. reach, let us know who you are. Join the mailing list. You know, send me an email. You know, however it is you want to instant message me on Instagram. You know, message me on Facebook. Message me on TikTok. I don't care. Pick a pick a platform. Talk to me. Talk to me. Love talk to talk to me. Talk to me, baby. Talk, talk to, me. to me. Ask me some questions. I'd live for this shit. Yes. So. <laughs> Ask me questions, I tell you no lies. All right. No, I tell you no lies. Yes. See, you and, can, you sing. I don't, I know sing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and some of you may be finding us on uh, a new network. We're actually coming in to the Ethereal Network. And we're partnering oh. with uh, 11 other podcasters who all do metaphysical, spiritual based podcasts. And we're going to help each other grow our shows. And they're all people I know and like. And so, um, we're getting together and we're, so you may see a feed drop from somebody else where you like, wait, what the hell is this episode from somebody else that is on my show? I, I, I didn't subscribe to this. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I'm asking you to listen to them because they're freaking cool. Right. And I'm saying, Hey, you might like this. So now, now where uh, do I find, I don't know what an ethereal network is. You don't have where, to where find I... it. I'm just saying that you, we may have some, some promotions that we're going to do back and forth. You may oh, nice. okay. guest, you know, like Derek Loudermilk, who was on the show the other day. Yeah. Um, he is in the network. And so, so cool. he, you know, we did an exchange, but that was before the network existed. Right. So now we're, we're going to do this on a more regular basis. So I might be on his show. He might be on my show. You know, you might get, a, I might drop one of his episodes into the feed and say, Hey, you guys would love this episode. Check this out. Right. Things like that. So just know that that may be coming. Okay. Or that is coming. So be on the lookout for it and check out their episodes because they're good. They're great. Okay. All right. Yes, We're all right. over. Do, do, all right. Do you have a wooism for today? A oh, wooism. Um, be, be careful what you ask for, for you will surely get it. That's the damn truth. <laughs> and thank y'all so much for subscribing. Um, hit the like button. Um, if you're on YouTube, hit the, do the subscribe -y things. If you're on YouTube, if whatever platform that you listen to us on the podcast, share with your rate friends. us, share, get the word out. Yeah. All right, well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye.